Hello and welcome to Analog Electronic Circuits. This is uh, lecture 3 and uh, today we are going to start working with active circuit elements. Uh, our basic actics, active circuit element is going to be the MOSFET. So, in this course we are not going to get into the physics of the MOSFET. But uh, we are going to start from the symbol and then work with the MOSFET as if it was a black box and you know we have the char operating characteristics of it. So here goes. So first of all, the symbol that we are going to use is of this fashion. So there are most importantly three terminals. There also happens to be a fourth terminal which is underplayed. So we normally do not talk about this fourth terminal, There is, all, but it is also there. So the terminals are labeled drain, gate and source. This fourth terminal is called the body, but as I said do not worry too much about it as of now. The source is the one with the arrow. Now there are a lot of uh, other um, uh, ways to depict the MOSFET, other popular symbols. One very popular symbol which is used in digital circuits, often used in digital circuits is this with no arrow. And the reason why there is no arrow is because the MOSFET is symmetric the source and drain can be interchanged and um, secondly in digital circuits the MOSFET operates as a switch. So the switch is either on or it is off. So when the gate voltage is high, when the gate voltage is high the electronic switch between drain and source is on, when the gate voltage is low then the electronic switch between drain and source is open. Okay. So, it is almost like this is pushed in when, it, when the voltage is high and you know a connection is made between drain and source. So, that is the logic behind this symbol, behind the symbol for, that is used for digital circuits. Now, uh, there is yet another kind of MOSFET called, so this is this MOSFET is called the N channel MOSFET. All right, so all of this applies for the N channel MOSFET. There is also another MOSFET which is called the P channel MOSFET and in digital circuits the P channel MOSFET is shown in this fashion. Right? There is a bubble at the gate which means that when the gate is low then the switch, the electronic switch between source and drain turns on, that is all. Okay? Now the equivalent, uh, equivalent symbol for the MOSFET in analog circuits looks like this and notice I, I said just now I said a little bit earlier that the arrow is always on the source. So here the source has the arrow, irrespective of whether it is a PMOS or an NMOS, the arrow in the symbol is on the source. There also happens to be a fourth terminal called the body, but as I said the fourth terminal is underplayed, we do not use it too often, it is there. So this is the P channel MOSFET. Okay. Now there is a reason why in the P channel MOSFET the source has been put on top and the drain has been put on the bottom. There is a reason. The reason is that we want to show that the current always flows from top to bottom. That is what we like. We like the current to flow from top to bottom 
we like current to flow from top to bottom. So, in the n channel MOSFET, the current flows from D to S. In the p channel MOSFET, the current is actually flowing from S to D, okay, from source to drain. So, this is, this is why the symbol is flipped and shown, where S is on top and D is at the bottom. The arrow is always in the direction of the flow of current. So, the arrow over here, I am talking about this arrow and this arrow, all right. These two arrows always point in the direction of the flow of current. Now, I told you just now that in digital circuits, the symbol does not have an arrow at all and the one of the reasons why is because the MOSFET is a symmetrical device and it does not matter which is source, which is drain. So, how about that? In analog circuits, does it matter which is source, which is drain? How do you figure out which is source, which is drain, especially when the MOSFET is a symmetrical device, right? It is perfectly symmetric. The way the MOSFET is made, So, I said that I do not want to show the physics, but I am still showing a little bit of it. Okay. So, there is no real distinction between source and the drain, they look exactly the same. Okay. Then what determines which is source, which is drain? If, if on one hand, I am saying that as far as manufacturing goes, there is no distinction between the source and the drain. They are exactly equal in all respects. Then, how do you decide which is the source terminal and which is the drain terminal? And what is the answer? The answer is that the flow of current determines which is source, which is drain. The current always flows from top to bottom just like water. Okay. So, the way we draw our circuits in electronics, in analog electronics, also in digital electronics, especially in analog electronics, the way we draw our circuits. So, there is a particular way we like to draw it. The way we like to draw our circuits is that higher potential is above, lower potential is below. Okay. And just like water, current will always flow from higher to lower potential, which means that if the terminal is drawn higher, then that is the origin of the current. If the terminal is drawn at the bottom, that is where the current is going. And that determines which is source, which is drain. Is this understood? So, in analog circuits, the MOSFET this is not the BJT by the way. In the BJT, the collector is manufactured differently from the emitter. There is a difference in terms of manufacturing. So, you cannot flip the BJT and hope that it works. There is no way it is going to work. As far as the MOSFET goes, you can interchange the terminals. If I interchange the terminals of this particular analog MOSFET, right S and D, if I interchange, then what is going to happen is the flow of the current will still remain the same. Okay. Let us take an example. So, suppose you have got a circuit that looks like this. Okay. 
Okay. So, this is high potential. So, I am going to call this by the way, there are a few conventions. In electronic circuits, we try not to draw the voltage sources. Okay. So, in your first year on or in your second year, you would have learnt to draw a voltage source. like this right in electronic circuits this voltage source is implicit okay we always we don't like to draw these voltage sources if for example i write over here vdd then that automatically means that there is a voltage source between these two terminals worth vdd volts and if i don't write a voltage source for example at this terminal there is no voltage source uh, or there is nothing written okay then it is implicit that this terminal is connected to zero volts okay or ground so this is the reference potential so these are things that no one is going to tell you but these are implicit when we are dealing with electronic circuits all electronics analog digital we just ignore, we just do not draw the voltage sources um, so explicitly anymore. Okay. So, suppose you have got a circuit like this. Okay. Now, obviously current is always going to flow from high to low potential. So, what is going to be the direction of flow of current? like this. Okay. So, right now the gate voltage is something. I have applied some volts at the gate, I do not know what it is, it does not matter, it is not important. The gate side what is going on is not important. The flow of current is always going to be from high to low potential, which means that Whichever way you have placed the MOSFET, it does not matter if you have put the drain terminal, if you have put this terminal over here and this terminal over here. The arrow always points in the direction of flow of current and I know that the direction of flow of current is this way, which means current is going to go flow through the arrow and come out. Automatically, it means that this is the source and this is the drain. Is this understood? Okay. So, I, I spent some time on this, this is very trivial, not many people talk about this at all and the reason I spent some time is to avoid confusion later on when we deal with PMOS devices. Because if you had placed a PMOS device over here, something, the gate potential is somewhere, it does not matter. Okay, what would be the flow of current? The flow of current would be from top to bottom, which means that the arrow goes on the top, which means that this is the source and this is the drain. Is this understood? Great. So, this is the convention, current flows from top to bottom. This convention we are going to try to follow in all of our, not try to follow, we will follow uh, this convention in all of our uh, circuit schematics. There are some places of confusion where potentials are equal. Okay. So, in such scenarios, we try to, I mean sometimes drain and source might have equal potential. Maybe you are trying to use the MOSFET as a switch, just like in digital circuits. In such cases, in analog circuits, we show the MOSFET horizontally because we are not sure which is high potential, which is low potential. And in such a scenario, either left or right, it does not matter which side, can be drain, can be source, it really does not matter. Is this okay? Great. 
All right. So, so far we have um, understood the symbols of the MOSFET, the conventions of drawing and the conventions of drawing electronic circuits. There is one also small point that uh, needs to be mentioned. When two wires cross and I do not put a dot at the middle, then it means that they do not have a contact. Okay. If I put a dot in the middle, then there is a contact. Okay. So, this is the convention of drawing circuits, right? Do not draw things like this, there is no need, no need. Okay, this is the convention and this convention has been around for the last 50 years. So, let us not draw these uh, funny uh, loops of wires. Okay, so, this is engineering practice, drawing the dot. In case of a contact, you draw the dot. If there is no contact, then do not put the dot. This is engineering practice, all right. This is nothing. Okay. So, just pointing these things out because these are conventions that we follow in engineering and uh, practicing these conventions is a good idea. All right. Next, let us start using the MOSFET and the first thing that you are going to do is try to understand what the MOSFET does, what are its characteristics, right. This is the first absolutely rock bottom thing that you would like to do. So, what we are going to do is we are going to use voltage sources and let us start with the N MOS. Okay. And we are going to call this as V D S and we are going to call this as V G S. Now, the first thing that happens, let us keep V D S at some large voltage, large depends on the rating of the MOSFET. So, uh, if we are talking about let us say uh, a 0.18 micron device, I will tell you later on what this 0.18 micron means, but suppose we are using a 0.18 micron device, then the absolutely largest voltage that you can operate this MOSFET at is 1.8 volts. So, let us keep VDS at 1.8 volt, suppose, suppose this is at 1.8 volt. Okay. We keep it steady and now what we are going to do is we are going to sweep the voltage VGS and find out the currents, all right. So, this current is called ID and unlike the BJT in the MOSFET, there is no current in the gate, it is the gate the drain is the source. So, the gate is open circuit. So, brief recap, we go back to the picture over here. This gate is metal or so called metal, modern MOSFETs are no longer made up of metal, they are made up of uh, polysilicon. This area is called the oxide. This is a very thin oxide layer of silicon dioxide, okay, and this is semiconductor. Silicon, crystalline silicon, which has been doped, lightly doped with P minus. And then this is silicon which is doped with N plus, silicon doped with N plus. 
all right so this is the structure you've got metal you've got oxide and then you have a semiconductor so you have a stack of metal oxide semiconductor so that is what makes the acronym so the acronym for mosfet is M mosfet M metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor so this is a transistor what kind of transistor is it it's a field effect transistor and all of this is what you study in your physical electronics or in your um, devices course right we are not going to discuss all of these uh, the operation of the mosfet what i want to point out over here is that you have got a stack metal oxide semiconductor and this oxide is an insulator okay oxide is like glass silicon dioxide is like glass it is a perfect insulator unless you really apply large voltages you are not going to have any current. So given that it is an insulator the current in the gate terminal is going to be 0. No current flows into the gate and this is not an approximation we are not talking about an approximation in very very modern devices right where uh, you when when you are working at the edge of technology over there the oxide layer is is just a few atoms thick this oxide layer is just a few atoms thick and you can have some quantum tunneling current in such scenarios all right but ordinary mosfets don't worry about it the gate current is going to be zero so as far as this course is concerned we are going to nicely assume that the gate current is perfectly zero and this is really not an approximation it's not an assumption it's truth okay gate current is zero all right so therefore the current in the drain is the same as the current in the source kcl and therefore id is all that you need to measure right you don't have to measure the gate current fine so we are going to sweep the voltages vgs vds right and as we sweep these voltages we are going to understand what is id now in our first experiment we have placed vds at 1.8 volts that has been said and the maximum voltage that this device can tolerate in any of its terminals is 1.8 volts okay now you sweep vgs and what are you going to measure what are you going to measure id because that is the only thing to be measured there is no gate current there is no other current there is only id so i am going to sweep vgs measure id and what we find is that the characteristics looks somewhat like this okay uh, it's mostly quadratic in nature and there is a voltage below which current does not flow so this voltage is called vt the threshold voltage all right uh, if you go to a try to make a crude model of this equation you will find that it closely resembles id equal to some k constant times vgs minus vt the whole squared okay it closely resembles this characteristics now as i said i have placed vds at 1.8 volts if you change it to 1.6 volts or 1.5 volts or 1.7 volts there is not going to be any change in this curve no change so whatever is vds it doesn't matter 
you can wiggle V d s around, there is not going to be any significant change in the drain current. Okay, this is the characteristics. Next, what we are going to do is, we are going to do the opposite. We are going to sweep V d s and measure I d, all right. And for this, I have to set a value of V g s. So, let us say I set some value, you know, let us start with something a little above V t, we set V, v g s equal to this one, all right and then we are going to set V g s equal to this one, and then we are going to set V g s equal to this one, right. So, a few, few such V g s points and what you are going to observe is that the current flows like this. Okay. So, there is going to be a region beyond which, so this is my first point of V g s, then the second point of V g s. So, these are different V g s values. So, for different V g s values, you do this measurement and what you are going to find is that as you change V d s beyond a certain point, beyond a certain point as you change V d s, the current does not change, all right. Now, we need to know what, what is the value of uh, V d s beyond which the current does not change. And if you try to model this curve, it looks exactly the same as, it, it looks exactly similar to the other one. And what you are going to find is that if V d s is greater than or equal to V g s minus V t, then there is no change in I d. All right, this is the condition that you are going to come up with, that if V d s is slightly more than V g s minus V t, not slightly, more then V g s minus V t, that is what this curve is about. Okay. Then I d is not going to change at all with V d s, it is going to be flat. Okay. Now, of course, this is an approximation which we are going to correct later on. We are um, right now going to assume that it is perfectly flat, but later on we are going to modify and say that no, no, it is not really so flat. Okay. But for now, let us say that I d does not change at all with V d s, at least for today's lecture. All right. Now, if I d does not change, suppose you have got an element okay, and I do not know what this circuit element is. And this is the drain terminal, this is the source terminal and I d is going in and coming out, all right, it is going right through, 
okay. And what you are trying to say over here is that even if I change the voltage between drain and source, V d s is the drain to source voltage, even if I change this voltage I d does not change. In that case, what is the circuit element inside? What kind of circuit element do you have? Here is an element, I change the voltage across it, the current does not change. What kind of circuit element is it? Is it a resistor? No. What is it? Is it a voltage source? No. What is it? It is a current source. Okay. So, a current source is a circuit element across which if I change the voltage, it does not matter, the current remains the same. All right. So, here I have a current source, I can change the voltage V d s, but the current does not change. All right. This is what we want. So, analog circuits operate in this region of the MOSFET. Almost all analog circuits, our, our um, entire focus is going to be to make sure that V d s is greater than V g s minus V t. If we can make sure that V d s is greater than V g s minus V t, then the drain to source terminal behaves like a current source and that is one of the, uh, 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 one of the main strategies in analog circuit design. So, in analog circuit design, make sure V d s is more than V g s minus V t. If you do that, then you have got a current source, hopefully your analog circuit is going to work. So, all the devices in your circuit should obey this principle and why? Because I am saying so. All right, only very special analog circuits, very special ones, which we are not going to cover in this course. These special analog circuits sometimes require V d s less than V g s minus V t. This otherwise V d s has to be more than V g s minus V t. All right. So, nomenclature, this region is V d s greater than equal to V g s minus V t. This region is called the saturation region. Now, unfortunately, uh, in the bipolar junction transistor, if you have studied the bipolar junction transistor, you will get confused because in the BJT, the saturation region is the opposite, the exact opposite over here, right. This is called the saturation region in the BJT, right. Uh, so, to avoid this confusion, we are going to use this word, this is not in the books, we are going to call this the flat region, all right. And this region is called the triode region and analog circuits do not like to be over there, only very special situations you are going to operate in the triode region, otherwise you are going to be in the flat region of the MOSFET. And the flat region is my word, right, it is actually called the saturation region. Why I am not going to use saturation is because a lot of you are very comfortable with uh, bipolar junction devices and BJTs unfortunately. Uh, saturation means the exact opposite of what we want to convey. So, I am going to call this the flat region of the MOSFET and flat means that the characteristics is flat over there, that is exactly where we want to be. Great. Now, tell me something. Here I have, suppose my device is in the flat region. I have set V g s and V d s such that the device is operating in the flat region, okay, some V g s and some V d s. So, this device is already in the flat region. Now, depending on the value of V g s, the current from drain to source is going to change depending on the value of V g s, 
I will either be this current or this current or this current or anything in between, right. So, what kind of current source is it? Is it, what is it? What kind of current source is it? It is a, what is it? A voltage controlled current source, where the controlling voltage is the voltage between gate and source. Fine. Now, normally when you have studied VCCS voltage controlled current source, you have said that the current is this voltage times some g, right. So, that is not really the case over here. The current in this case goes by this equation I d equal to k times V g s minus V t the whole square. So, it is not a straightforward relationship, it is not I d equal to some g times V g s, right. That is not what it is. Instead, it is I d equal to some k times V g s minus V t the whole squared. So, this is some nonlinear equation, right. It is a quadratic equation and um, it is not as simple as uh, your circuit theory uh, voltage control current source. But still, as far as conceptual understanding goes, it still looks like a voltage control current source. There is a voltage, it controls the value of the current and this current happens to be non-linearly related, qu quadratically related to the voltage between gate and source. That that is just fit. Okay. Is this understood so far? All right. Now, a little uh, perspective over here in the bipolar junction transistor, those who have studied it, we are not really going to discuss, but I just want to point out that in the bipolar junction transistor, you end up with a current controlled current source and it depends on the base current. Remember, there is a current in the base in the BJT. Here, there is no current. The gate does not have any current. This is a voltage controlled current source. Fine. Any questions? All right. Now, what we are going to do is, we are now going to place the MOSFET. All right. Uh, before I place the MOSFET, I am going to generalize a little bit. I am going to write I d is equal to some function of V g s, right. Remember this equation over here I d equal to k times V g s minus V t the whole squared. This is a model and this model is not necessarily the absolute truth, right. In fact, it is not. Uh, it is just a model. It is the model that we are going to use in this course because uh, this is one of the simplest models available. Okay. So, in general, I d is some function of V g s, some function. It can be quadratic, it can be other things also. All right. If I say that this flat region is not absolutely flat, there is a slight slope to it, right, slight slope is there. In that case, I d is no longer a function only of V g s, it is also a function of V d s. Okay. It is a very strong function of V g s and a very weak function of V d s, but it is still a function of both V g s and V d s. Is this okay? All right. What is the slope? What is this slope? Suppose I d is some function of V d s. What is the slope over here? The slope is 
the derivative of i d f with respect to v d s. Okay. So, that slope over here is partial derivative. So, this slope I am talking about this particular slope right that is the partial derivative of i d with respect to v d s. Okay. What is this slope? This slope is partial derivative of i d with respect to v g s. Thank you. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is uh, a Taylor series. You are comfortable with Taylor series? Yes. So, we are going to say that suppose So, I had V g s and V d s and now I am going to add a slight small voltage source of value small v sub small d small s okay, in addition to capital V d s and I am going to add a small voltage source small v sub small v g small s in addition to capital V g s all right and the current over here I am going to call this current as capital I d which was when I had applied V g s and V d s plus a small i sub small d. Okay. So, so the same function of V g s plus a small V g s and V d s plus a small V d s all right and can you do Taylor series? on this expression. So, f of v g s plus v g s comma v d s plus v d s is equal to f of v g s comma v d s plus partial derivative of f with respect to v g s times small v g s plus partial derivative of f with respect to v d s times small v d s. These are the first order terms and then second order terms, what were the second order terms? lot of other second order terms, second order, third order and then it goes on and on. If you assume that small v g s is very small and small v d s is very small, then these second order terminals do not count. Okay. So, our assumption is going to be that small v g s and small v d s are 
infinitesimally small. Okay, so let us assume that small VGS, small VDS, these are very, very small quantities and they do not matter, uh, uh, the second order, higher order terms do not matter as far as the Taylor series is concerned. In which case, my my uh, derivation over here boils down to F of VGS comma VDS, what was that? That was nothing but capital ID plus the slope with respect to VGS. Let us call it uh, So, this is all that we are going to consider, all right. So, these two Taylor series have to be computed at these two slopes have to be computed at capital ID. Okay. So, what does that mean? What it means is as follows, what it means is that suppose I have applied capital VGS and capital VDS okay. and for the given value of VGS and VDS, I work out this to be my point, right. This is where I am, VGS in terms of VGS and in terms of VDS. So, it selects this curve, the value of VGS has selected this particular curve and the value of VDS has selected this particular point, all right. Now, I apply an incremental change in VDS and an incremental change in VGS. What is going to be the new current? So, the new current is going to be the old current plus something more. So, for that I work out the slope over here and I work out, oh sorry, correspondingly there is a point over here. Okay. Uh, so, I work out the slope over here that gives me partial derivative of I d with respect to V d s and I work out the slope over here that gives me partial derivative of I d with respect to V g s. So, these two dou I d by dou V g s, dou I d by dou V d s, right. I compute these two slopes and then I d plus this small i d is nothing but capital I d plus one slope times the incremental change in voltage V g s plus the other slope times the incremental change in voltage V d s, fine. And looking at this I d plus small i d is equal to I d plus some other stuff, I d and I d will cancel from both sides and that will imply that small i d is nothing but one slope times small v g s plus the other slope times small v d s. Okay. So, a few notes about convention. So, our convention is going to be that whenever I talk about a capital letter voltage or a capital letter current with a capital subscript. Okay. These voltages or these currents are not going to, these are fixed, 
okay these are fixed voltages and currents when i talk about a small voltage with a small subscript then that indicates that it's a small incremental voltage riding on top of this big one okay this is going to be my convention and then there are two more one is what is the sum of these two and the sum of these two is going to be indicated as a small voltage with capital subscripts okay and the last one which is a capital with small subscripts capital with small subscripts is going to be nothing but the fourier transform of of the small one with small subscripts or laplace transform whatever is convenient okay so so these are the four possibilities capital 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 small 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 capital okay so capital capital means it's a fixed quantity small sub small is an incrementally small voltage or current that is changing with time this is a time domain signal and if i work out the equivalent frequency domain signal it is capital sub small and the sum of small small with capital capital this is the actual voltage so this is small sub capital all right so this voltage okay and likewise this current id plus small id is going to be small i sub capital d fine so this these are just conventions uh, if you open the books these conventions are adhered to normally so whenever we are uh, uh, this is just so that we keep uh, everything clear avoid confusion at all times is this okay so far so good all right so what have we done so far we first started with applying two voltages vgs and vds okay then i found out that for the given vgs i obtain a certain current id i pick that value of vgs that value of vds obtain a certain current id all right this is what we have done so far then we incrementally changed vds and vgs okay if i incrementally change vds a little wiggle over here means that depending on whether small vds is positive or negative it's going to move around over here okay and depending on whether small vgs is positive or negative it's going to move around over there right so if i only apply small vds i keep moving on this curve however if i apply small vgs then i move around on this curve which means that i now need to select between other curves depending on the value of the wiggle on vgs okay if vds vgs are both moving around then i am not sure i can't graphically show you exactly what is going to happen but we know from taylor series that this is what i will get i will get a wiggle on the current some extra incremental current 
and the incremental current is going to come from the Taylor series. It is going to be one incremental current because of Vgs, there is going to be another incremental current because of Vds. So, this entire thing, this particular equation is modeled in terms of a little circuit. So, what we show is this, I d is the sum of two currents. small i d is the sum of two currents. One current is one slope times an incremental voltage V g s. So, if this is the drain terminal and this is the source terminal, V g s is not related to the drain and the source terminal. So, this looks like a current source. And over here, I have V d s times dou I d by dou V d s. So, this looks, this looks like a resistor of value 1 by the slope. This current source is of value ok. So, this is what we do. Uh, let us uh, 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 stop over here and we will uh, continue from here in the next class. Thank you.